So, I don't often talk about just purely visual design. I think there are other creators who have a bit more footing there. But when Lee Sin's ASU was announced, the player's interest was peaked. And when Lee Sin's ASU dropped onto PvE, the interest paid off. Over the last two years, it became obvious that new champions were no longer the hype points. What used to be an awesome plug for the archetype hole that wasn't in League of Legends yet, became simply yet another playable character in an already oversaturated roster. To be honest, it has to be a nightmare trying to design an entirely new champion that is completely unique. Smolder was a good shot, except he got betrayed by the player's expectations, who uh, expected a big dragon. And besides that, I think Briar was a big success. But still, it is obvious what kind of obstacles Riot is running into. The fantasy archetypes are simply running out. And that's not to mention what's happening on the gameplay side. Every new champion brings it entire new set of abilities which you have to learn about if you want to know how to play against that champion. So, the golden age of new champions is simply gone in this game. And I don't think there is a way for Riot to make a comeback here. Which is why it seems like the focus is going towards game modes. With Arena getting more and more iterations, and now we are even getting some experimentation around PvE. However, while the hype of all the new champions is slowly diminishing, a whole new excitement is rising behind it. And it all started around Arcane, when the hype around League was already pretty good. See, when Caitlyn got her ASU, it kickstarted a whole new wave of updates. It was updates big enough so that players could get excited about them, but not as big as VGUs, which proved to be very expensive over time. So in a way, ASUs are the golden middle ground for what works. It is on the cheaper side compared to all the other updates, and it fleshes out something people already love. And that's a key aspect of why ASUs are successful. See, League has a roster of champions which people are already attached to. Most people are not really looking for a new champion to like. Especially not with the roster already being so broad. Instead, the vast majority of players already found their favorite champion and they are rolling with them. Which also means that when that champion gets an ASU, the excitement goes up for the already existing audience. This is something new champions simply don't have. They have to acquire their new audience. Now what's even better about ASU is that they stick to the original designs of the champions. They don't really rework anything, they just modernize it. It is as if the champions become cards in Legends of Runeterra. I'm looking at you, Nidalee. And so, with each ASU, as Riot gets better at figuring out what people want to see, the ASUs keep getting better and better. And it kept rolling all the way until we arrived on Lee Sin, who might be the best ASU to date. This all started about 10 months ago, when Riot released a new post where they confirmed that the old Lee Sin sucks. His model was awful, his rigging sucked, and his shape was so uninteresting, he was the one champion who kept getting confused for other champions the most. And what's absolutely crazy is that with the new ASU, Riot fixed everything. And the community's view absolutely reflected it. Finally, they updated him. Just imagining they could do this to like 40 champions is exciting me. Hoping is before 2050, great job on the ASU. Base animations are so clean I might not use his legendary skins anymore. Sounds exciting, right? Well, it is. But there are some tiny exceptions in his designs. But also, you'll see that because the quality of some of his skins went up, it means that the pricing will be adjusted too. So, with the good help of skin spotlights, let's have a look at what we got. Starting with the classic Lee Sin. Which is technically not the classic, but we'll get to that. The first thing you might notice is that his ponytail now has proper physics. It is the exact same tech that allows it to follow him, similar to something like Aurelian's tail. And yes, in many ways, the ponytail is now the focus of his design. I mean, what else could you focus on? That's kind of the point of the ASU. Now, as people mentioned, the animations are incredibly clean. But what's absolutely mind-blowing here are the VFX. 
See, previously, Wrights tried to make the effects look like sound. And you know what's weird about sound? It's really hard to see it. So they tried a bit of warping of perception, maybe some translucency, and sprinkle a little bit of blue on it. Yeah, sure, that's a sound. Well, here, they made everything way cooler by using a little bit of Ionian Jade. Now, it actually looks like Ionian magic, and I love how it makes his fists glow. It is such a great contrast to the rest of the model, and it is so easy to see. Not to mention that all the sound effects are now Jade-themed too. You can always hear a little bit of crystal sound effects. And of course, all of this reflects on the other abilities too, including the awesome Jade Shield, which is similar to Karma's, and I assume that's on purpose. But it's still nothing to him just slamming the ground. It looks so impactful, it makes you feel like you are playing Malphite. And then of course, we also get the ever so satisfying ultimate, which... is okay. Well, it's because it's not that important to see Lee Sin's ultimate in the middle of the fight. What's important is to see the enemy actually flying away. Which is why, for the sake of clarity, Riot didn't want to use too many VFX here. So you know what? It looks good. Regardless, after looking at this, this is why everyone keeps saying that the base Lee Sin is the new legendary. These animations are so smooth and it all looks so good. So now, let's see how it compares to skins. The one a lot of people are focusing on is Dragon Fist Lee Sin. And that's because in most regions it is Lee Sin's most popular skin. So it made sense for Riot to put a lot of their effort there. So besides the new unique recall animation, it is mostly the visual effects that make this one so good. If you pair this with the new sound effects, well now, it is a big upgrade over the previous version, which used to be just a new model. And that's why the price of Dragon Fist Lee Sin will be bumped up. So the new price of this skin will be 1350 RP. Now the other skin a lot of people are focusing on is Storm Dragon Lee Sin. And that's simply because this one was always the most problematic. If there was one champion with one skin that always got confused for something else, it was this one. It was notorious. So of course, the notable difference is the ponytail. That is simply because the base Lee Sin has it, and so all the skins are trying to stay as close to that as possible. As I mentioned, the ponytail is one of the main aspects that actually distinguish Lee Sin from everyone else. So you'll see that it's really weird that he doesn't have it in some other skins. Anyway, of course, this is a legendary skin, so there are new animations, even though they were mostly taken from the previous version, which also includes the spell effects and sound effects, which were also part of the old version. So I have nothing bad to really mention here. It is just an upgrade. And of course, the same goes for the Prestige version. It was a yellow version of the skin before, and it is a yellow version of the skin now. There is not much to mention here. So after that, why don't we have a look at the biggest downgrade of all of them? Of course, that is God Fist Lee Sin. See, if you look at these animations, you might notice that... They don't look that good. What's worse, they look clunky. And that's for a very strange reason. You see, for this skin, because it is a legendary with entirely unique animations, which are part of the old version, instead of making a whole new set of animations for the new ASU, they just retargeted the old animations with the old model onto the new skeleton. The issue with this is, the new ASU animations are way better than the old legendary skin. Which is why people legitimately call this the worst Lee Sin skin. It's because it actually got stuck in the past. Fix Godfist! What the f*** are those 2013 VFX? Lee's older skins are now officially better than all the legendary skins. Dude, they made Godfist Lee Sin his worst skin! I got it in a chest and even I feel robbed! So yeah, Godfist Lee Sin? Not in a great place right now. So to contrast this, why don't we have a look at the biggest upgrade of all of these? A skin that might still be at a lower price, but definitely deserves the legendary status. 
Knockout Lee Sin. What's funny is that by default the skin isn't that interesting. It is literally just Lee Sin in very casual clothes, with mostly his old animations, where he's punching instead of kicking. However, unlike Godfist Lee Sin, you can see that the knockout animations were altered a bit and they feel a bit more springy, which could be because they are still targeting the newly updated skeleton. Combine that with the cartoony punch sounds and the comic-like effects, well, suddenly, for not that much effort, you get the biggest upgrade. Which also includes a very impactful new ultimate animation. And the community appreciates it. The Knockout skin is actually a baller update. Well done, Riot. Knockout is legit legendary tier. Although, before we move on, I really wanna point out that one thing. As I mentioned, some skins don't have ponytail. And I don't get why. The ponytail was supposed to be what separates Lee Sin from the other characters, and now he doesn't have it. So this design is purely relying on the boxing gloves. So I hope the readability will work out here. Because if not, Riot might actually have to go back and give him a ponytail here. Now next we have another classic, Muatai Lee Sin. Just like Godfist and Knockout, this skin has its own animations. And again, they are taken from the original version of the skin. Which makes me confused, because why does this look better than Godfist, for example? Well, for one, the VFX are juicy again. The Jade effects simply contrast very well with the fact that he's wearing nothing at all. Don't Google what I just said. Now, after this, there is also Pool Party Lee Sin. The one upgrade he actually gets is that he actually throws his drink. In the old version of the skin, the drink was just glued to his hand. But also, the old one had the idle animation where he sipped from the drink. This one is now missing. And so, Riot put that animation on when you are casting your shield. And you know what, I appreciate that his passive is now blue, because it's pool party. Then of course, there is also Playmaker Lee Sin. This one is really cool, because all of his visual effects are themed around soccer. And it really makes you feel like you are running around on a football field. Also, he gets unique fire hands. And of course, he's throwing a fiery football around. And that counts for something. Though I don't know what. See, and then there is traditionally sin. And as I said at the very beginning, this one is special. Because... This was supposed to be the classic Lee Sin. This was his default appearance in the concepts, but eventually it was changed. So here, we can just say that it looks good. And there is nothing more we can add. After which we get to Acolyte Lee Sin, which represents all the Ionian monks. And of course, it has a clever design change, because now it is using a ribbon that is attached to the back of his hood. This is the same trick to simulate the ponytail. And it all also has the base visual effects, which makes sense because this is supposed to be just Lee Sin as a monk. In fact, it is such a good upgrade that the new price will be 750 RP. I know, it is hard to believe it was still floating around the 500. But then of course we have the eSports skins. So first there is SKT T1. Once again, the obvious new addition is the ponytail, but everything else remains as it was. I mean, it was a 750 RP skin after all. This one doesn't even get a unique recall, which is something the FPX did get. Again, the ponytail is a necessity. But I love how the skin really just feels like a Power Ranger. The fiery spell effects are just awesome. I don't think you would be even able to tell that this is an eSports skin, which really proves that this is just great design. Then after that, there is also the Nightbringer skin, which is mostly a normal skin that is separated with uh, dark flames. But of course, that is only the case uh, if you don't get the Prestige version, which has light flame effects instead. But that's only until you get the 2022 Prestige version, which is honestly nearly identical. Like, I was staring at these for two minutes, and you know what, I'm done, I don't even care what's the difference. But then there is Zenith Games Lee Sin, which honestly is a skin I totally forgot was even in the game. 
but it still looks pretty good. It is using the cybernetic sound effects and visual effects which the original skin had, nothing new there, and it is even using the Elder Dragon icon. And then of course there is the recent Heaven Scale Lee Sin. This one kept the old upgrade which the old skin already had. The old one had updated animations that made it look like Lee Sin was using his claws. And the same is true even in the ASU. He is still clawing people, which includes some scratching during his abilities. And yes, of course, this one also got a prestige version, which gives him a more of a pinkish color scheme. But of course, we can't forget about the gold, because the gold is important in a prestige skin. But that's where Lee Sin is right now. Overall, this is simply a really good ASU. These kinds of updates is what everyone wants to see in League. So it's great to see that Riot is really focusing on them. And now I just wonder, how is Teemo going to turn out? Which also reminds me, do you remember when we saw that potential ASU for Malphite? Yeah, apparently that was just some internal testing which we weren't supposed to see, so... Uh, Malphite is totally getting an ASU. But it all also has a bad side. You see, whenever an ASU drops, the popularity of this champion goes up. And Lee Sin is quite a complex champion. Which means that his win rate is being kept up by the few good players who still play him. But now... His win rate is about to get really bad. Apparently, when Jace got his free arcane skin, which was sort of an ASU, his win rate dropped to 42%. Godspeed, Lee Sin. But you know, that's still not the worst thing about Lee Sin's ASU. Because throughout all of this, besides all the skins, Riot also updated the splash arts. And of all of these, one strikes fear into the heart of men. Look, really don't look into the retweets. <laughs>